All right. What I do on prep for the tubes, I take a little water and run down in each one of the holes with this little brush. Make sure it's kind of clean. All right. And uh, let it sit for just a second while I go ahead and prep my epoxy. And what I'm using, and I think I've showed this before, but I'll show it again. Just regular industrial strength JB Weld. So like I said, the tubes are going to have a press fit. Now I do take the tubes after I cut them to length. I bevel them about a 15 or 20 degree bevel. So it's real smooth there. Uh, going in from the top, of course, is how I do it. And uh, you'll see how I put a lot of extra on there. So let me get everything set up and we'll go to town. All right. I'm going to take my epoxy, pour me out about however much I think I'm going to need, and I believe me, be generous with it. The good thing about this is that it's not fast acting, so you got a little bit of time to work with it. Just don't take too long. Because remember, it's not just going in the tube hole. I also surround the outside of it. Once I get the tube in the head, I'll also use some to uh, surround the outside of the tube inside the port, which will leave a lot of overhang. That's why it has to harden about 12 hours or so, so it'll harden up enough where I can go in there with a sand roll and take all this stuff out and lay it in real nice it's going to have overhang in the port I'll have to touch it up but that's okay that's part of the pain in the ass that this is alright now I'm going to stand it up let me see if I've got this in the viewfinder I might have to come back yep I was right alright now watch how I do it I'm going to try to get you as close as I can okay I'm gonna take it and first thing I do I go in here and I put it all in the hole this is just my way of making sure that there's no vacuum leaks whatsoever and I, I like it squishing I like a lot of overhang in there remember it's easier to get it out have an overhang I know it's messy better to do it that way than to miss something and have it dry somewhere. Alright, then I come up. See, I'm getting it on the top. Okay. Now, I got a little bitty pile left. This head's going to get two tubes. Excuse me, I forgot something. Uh, it's going to have usually I see if I can get it in this way now I'm going to take and just lightly dip this tube I usually do this with them plastic rubber gloves I have my kids have used every one of them doing stupid stuff with them I try to keep it out of here so I'll pay hell for this but believe me they'll pay hell uh, later for it <laughs> they find the stupidest things I used to couldn't keep a magnet in here my younger sons was here alright now I go in here and I try oh lord of mercy alright that ain't gonna work I'm gonna have to take a leg I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in here See how hard that is? I can't get it to go in yet. So I'm going to have to take a hammer and lightly tap that. That's what I call my tube installation tool. And get it to drive the thing in there because it's just once you put that epoxy in my crush fit, it's just, it's just too damn tight. Yep. Alright, so I'm going to lay it down. And uh, take my hammer to it. 
Of course, I'm going to have to edit this out with the film. Uh, Lord of mercy, what a mess. All right. Wow. You always want to drive it inside the hole just a touch. That's why I make my tube links what I do. I don't want no interference where when I put my bolt hole on there that I've got tubes sticking out. All right, now, all right, here we go. Now look at the squish that I got left over. What do you do with that? I take and push it through and collect it and then put it right where it needs to be all in the little areas where the tube is. I wish that camera was a little closer but you're just feeling it through yes sir buddy right there on top. Oh this is nice here I barely I ain't got much tube protrusion at all you don't want it just Hitting it and circling it, although you can do it and it ain't bad, but this ain't bad at all. all right now, this is where I have my overhang. Boom. Alright. I admit it's messy and I do it messy, but that's okay. But you know what I don't have? I do not have vacuum leaks. I do not have oil getting through or anything like that. I mean, you saw how tight the crush fit was. This is just a little bit of extra security to make sure. All right, now I think I can get in here and show you something. Let me get this crap off my hand. I'm going to kill my little girl. All right, hold on. Uh, I don't want to touch my Panasonic camera, the one that I filmed all this, which by the way, it's been the best thing in the world. Panasonic model GS500. It was 2008's camcorder of the year, 3CCD. I do use film. All right, now let's get up here a little closer. Now, see, can you see it? See how I've got it covered? I mean, the whole tube, it is just engulfed. I've got all that overhang. It's like that on every one of them ports. Let's take a look at this one here. Oh, that blind. Look at that there. Okay, see, it's just, I mean, it's just covered in it. And like I said, that's okay, because I'm going to go in there with a sand roll. Remember, the tubes I use are 4130 chrome molly. So they're good and hard. Now, sometimes I do use the thin wall brass, but in this application, I'm not going to have to. I always cut my tubes about 125 short so when I hit that bevel on the top and I'm pushing look here I've got no overhang down here on the bottom it will not interfere with the deck surface of the head alright that concludes I'm Hoss port work blending installing the tubes what we got left now in the morning or whenever it dries is blending the epoxy off of it and uh do my little pickup points, try to see how close the measurements are, put the guides in and the valve job, and we are complete with this project. This is the end of the 5.0 series, getting ready to go to 6.0.